Hi guys, Olive here. Happy spring, at least to all of you who live in the Northern Hemisphere like I do. I have been so looking forward to spring rolling around. And even though I'm pretty positive that winter weather is not done with us here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, winter really likes to hold on in Western Pennsylvania, which I choose to blame on that groundhog, Punxsutawney Phil, I decided that I would at least celebrate spring in name, spring in spirit, by dressing like this and by showing you all the books that I've picked up recently that remind me of spring. So this is my spring book haul. I have a lot of books to show you in today's haul, so let's hop straight into it. I want to start off by showing you all the books that I've picked up that have something to do with nature or gardening, because I'm really hoping that spring blooms are right around the corner. So the first book is called Seed to Dust, Life, Nature, and a Country Garden by Mark Hammer. This is a memoir that spans a calendar year, and the author talks about working as a professional gardener on the estate of this mysterious, wealthy woman. I loved this author's previous book called How to Catch a Mole. It was one of my favorite nonfiction books of 2019. And this cover is just gorgeous. So I had to have it. Another book about gardening that I picked up is called Cultivating Delight, A Natural History of My Garden by Diane Ackerman. This is the author's account of the pleasure she takes in caring for her garden through the seasons. And since I am busy getting my own garden ready for the growing season right now, this one definitely appealed. This next book I think has the most spring-like cover I have ever seen. It's called Blooming Flowers, A Seasonal History History of Plants and People by Kasha Bhatti. This is a gorgeously illustrated history of the cultural and symbolic meanings of flowers over the centuries and across the world. I am particularly excited for the daffodil chapter because they make me so happy when they start blooming this time of year. It really feels like spring has arrived when the daffodils start blooming. And also I wanted to show you these spectacular end papers. But now I have a book about a specific flower that I wanted to show you, and that book is called The Poppy, A Cultural History from Ancient Egypt to Flanders Fields to Afghanistan by Nicholas J. Saunders. The poppy is a flower with a very complicated history. I am sure that is also discussed in the previous book, Blooming Flowers, but here I'm sure it's covered in much more detail because it's a beautiful flower as you can see, but it's also where opium and opioids like morphine and heroin come from. But now moving into some food books, the first one I have to show you is called The Food Explorer, The True Adventures of a Globetrotting Botanist Who Transformed What America Eats by Daniel Stone. This book seems to be part biography and part food writing, and we focus on this man who traveled around the world in order to bring novel foods like avocados, mangoes, seedless grapes, back to America. I actually got this book in the latest Read It and Eat box, which is a box that is curated by our very own Kim from the BookTube channel Bookmarks and Breadsticks. She sent me that box and I actually did a little unboxing video over on my Instagram. If you would like to see that, be sure to go check out my Instagram. And then another book that I picked up that seems to blend food and travel is called Truffle Boy, My Unexpected Journey Through the Exotic Food Underground by Ian Perkiesta. Author of this book is New York City's top truffle importer, and this book is his story of how he got into that business and his experiences with the extremely expensive mushroom all over the world. This one sounds like it's going to be wild. I actually have a second book about truffles in this haul, if you can believe it. It's called Truffle Hound, on the trail of the world's most seductive scent with dreamers, schemers, and some extraordinary dogs by Rowan Jacobson. This book is all about about finding truffles, what it takes to cultivate them, then hunt them down, and then also the mysticism that surrounds truffles. The culture around truffles just in general is absolutely unbelievable. It's something out of fiction, so I'm very excited to own more books on them. And now, since this is one of my book hauls, I of course have some bird books to show you, starting with Gods of the Morning, A Bird's Eye View of a Changing World by John Lister Kay. This book was written by a naturalist, and it's filled with his 
his observations of the changing seasons in the Scottish Highlands. The next book is called On the Wing, To the Edge of the Earth with the Peregrine Falcon by Alan Tennant. This book is all about this author's attempt to track the peregrine falcon migration across continents. Another book about a bird of prey that I got is called The Lure of the Falcon by Gerald Summers. This book is the story of a bond between a young man and his kestrel falcon that he rescued when it was injured. I really have a soft spot for books that discuss relationships between humans and rescued animals, and this one seems like it's probably a classic of that very specific subgenre. This next book is also about falcons. It's called Blood Ties, a story of falconry and fatherhood by Ben Crane. This is a memoir written by a man who grew up around all different types of birds and who was also diagnosed as being on the autism spectrum. When he eventually became a father and the world in general became too overwhelming for him, he actually fled and it was only falconry that brought him back home. This book sounds really moving. It involves birds. It sounds like exactly my kind of thing. And the last bird book that I have to show you in this haul is actually a novel. It's called Brood by Jackie Polzin, in which we follow an unnamed narrator who is trying her best to preserve her brood of four chickens through many different trials and tribulations. I have heard really good things about this one. Then I picked up two classics that I would like to show you. The first is this gorgeous penguin classics deluxe edition of Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. And like so many other classics out there, I can't believe I haven't read this yet, especially because it is so short. And this edition has these beautiful deckled edges and these beautiful French flaps that are decorated. Like it's just a beautiful book to own. And the other classic that I wanted to show you is actually a replacement copy of Ovid's Metamorphoses. I had a different edition of this book, but I don't know if it was the translation or what was going on. I've been really struggling to get through it over the past few years. So in my classics TBR video for 2022, in which I put this book on that TBR once again, I asked for recommendations on translations, if anyone had a good translation that they could recommend to me that I could try next, and someone recommended this one. So now that I own this, I'm very excited to give it another try. Then I got a work of translated fiction called The Great Passage by Shion Miura. This book is about three people people working in a small department of a publishing house endeavoring to create a dictionary. And just like all the other books about dictionaries that I've read or want to read, it seems like this one is full of a love of language, a love of words, and just a lot of geeky joy. And I am so on board for that. The last novel in this haul is the latest from Hannah Kent, author of Burial Rites, which was a total booktube darling for a while there. But her latest novel is called Devotion. And I had to special order this edition off of Book Depository because it is just so gorgeous and I had to hold it in my hands. This book is set in both mid 19th century Prussia and then later it's set in Australia. The friendship between two teenage girls is tested when one of the family emigrates to Australia in pursuit of religious freedom. Next up, I actually have a few short story collections. I've never really been a big reader of short stories, but ever since Five Tuesdays in Winter by Lily King, became one of my favorite fiction books of last year, I'm definitely feeling more motivated to read short stories now. So this first one I have to show you is actually one I've already read, but I very much want to reread it. It's called Diving Bells by Lucy Wood. In a recent video that I did, I actually reacted to my very first book haul here on the channel, and this was one of the books that I hauled in that very first book haul of mine. I read it that exact same year, and I was remembering as I was reacting to every thing in that video that I really liked this collection. I still remember a lot about it, but I sold it after I read it all those years ago because I didn't think I would ever want to reread it. Well, now all these years later, I do want to reread it because I'm feeling more invested in reading short stories. So I actually hunted down a used copy of this edition that I like so much and rebought it because I want to give it another try. The other two short story collections I have to show you are both very popular 
ones, you have likely seen these collections around somewhere on BookTube. The first one is The Secret Lives of Church Ladies by Disha Filia. This small little collection from West Virginia University Press that Pittsburgh area bookstores actually helped turn into a literary sensation. Given that I live here in Pittsburgh, I'm actually really surprised it took me so long to find a used copy of this in my favorite used bookstore in the city, but I finally found it. And the last short story collection I have to show you in this haul is one that I found at a library book sale. It is American Housewife by Helen Ellis, which I remember was pretty big on booktube a few years ago. Another book with a glamorous cover that I picked up is called Fifth Avenue, 5 a.m. Audrey Hepburn, Breakfast at Tiffany's, and The Dawn of the Modern Woman by Sam Wasson. This book is a history of the making of the classic film Breakfast at Tiffany's. And I mainly picked this book up because Brendan over at Brendan Reads, who has a fantastic booktube channel, by the way, he called this book one of his favorites of 2021. And I really trust his taste, especially when it comes to film and old Hollywood, like he really knows what he's talking about. I'll link his video in the description box below and up in the cards where he talks about this book because he gives a lot of valuable information. If you're interested in this book, he warns you that this book is much more about filmmaking than it is about Audrey Hepburn. But again, go check out his video if you want to learn more about this. But moving from film to TV, the next book I picked up is called How to Save a Life, The Inside Story of Grey's Anatomy by Lynette Rice. This is an oral history of the long running TV series that actually premiered in late March 2005. And I know that it premiered back then because that's actually when I started watching it. I loved the early seasons of this show. I actually reviewed one of the early seasons for my high school newspaper. Guess I've been a reviewer much longer than I thought. <laughs> I can't say I love what the show has become over the years. I think it has morphed into a soap opera and I no longer watch it. But those early seasons still mean so much to me. So I want to read this because I want all of those stories from way back when. I have had my eye on this next book for such a long time. I am so happy to finally own this. It's called Face Paint, The Story of Makeup by Lisa Eldridge. This is a history of makeup up beginning in ancient times, because believe it or not, makeup is not a new invention. People were using it in ancient times. So that's when the history of makeup within this book begins. And then we move into more modern times with iconic makeup styles and figures within the makeup industry. Given all of my different looks in my booktube videos, you can definitely tell that I am a lover of makeup. It is definitely an art form and a fickle one at that. So I am so interested to learn more about makeup in this book. But something you wouldn't necessarily need makeup for is camping or any other outdoor activities. And that's where this next book comes in. It's a biography of Juliet Gordon Lowe, the remarkable founder of the Girl Scouts by Stacey A. Cordery. Juliet Gordon Lowe, who went by the nickname Daisy, was a socialite who had actually lost her sense of hearing as a young woman. And when she became bored with her life of leisure, she decided to team up with the founder of the Boy Scouts in order order to create its equivalent for young girls. Another biography about an amazing woman is Baseball's Leading Lady, Effa Manley and the Rise and Fall of the Negro Leagues by Andrea Williams. This book focuses on Effa Manley, who was a co-owner of the Newark Eagles, which was a baseball team within the Negro Leagues. And paging through this book, it does seem rather obvious that this book was written for young audiences. But ever since I became acquainted with Effa Manley in a book I read and reviewed for the Christian Science Monitor last year called Our Team by Luke Eplin. It was a fantastic book. Ever since I read that and loved it, I've wanted to learn more about Effa Manley. So even if this one is a little bit more geared toward younger audiences, I will still be happy to read this. This next book isn't actually about baseball, but it is kind of tangentially related to baseball because it's called A Splintered History of Wood, Belt Sander Races, Blind Woodworkers, and Baseball Bats by Spike Carlson. This book seems like it's going to be a fascinating deep dive into wood as both as a resource, but then also as something to be shaped and crafted. I have heard it's a little bit insider baseball, forgive the pun, meaning that it's probably best for people who know a lot about woodworking and have it as a hobby. But honestly, I'm kind of okay with that because I'd love to learn more about woodworking and maybe this book will inspire me to take it up as a new hobby. 
like I have time for a new hobby. <laughs> and then the final book in this haul is about a different kind of play. It's called Deep Play by Diane Ackerman. And in this book, she focuses on play, but a type of play, deep play, that elevates our mood and awakens our senses. And we are actually not the only species to experience it. So in this book, Diane Ackerman gives examples of other species of animals and how they play. This book sounds like such a little slice of joy, and I just had to have it. So those were all of the spring feeling books that I have picked up recently. If you have read any of these books, if you're now interested in reading any of these books, please do let me know that or any other more general comments or questions you may have in the comment section below. In the description box below, you will find links to all of these books for your clicking convenience. And at the bottom of that exact same description box, you will find links to everywhere you can find me around the internet, including Goodreads and Instagram, where I'm the most active, in case you would like to keep up with what I am reading and writing about right now. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.